One thing that Clemson can do this week, guys, I originally said that I felt like that the one thing that Clemson can do this year is show me that your strength is your strength. Everybody's talking about the three-headed monster. You know what I'm talking about? Shipley, Pace, Maffa, the three-headed monster at the running back position. Now, unfortunately... Can I really say, looking back at the box score, that we saw a three-headed monster? Now, I picked Will Shipley in my workhorse of the week. Al, Mm. looking at my workhorse of the week, which Mm. is our contest where we try to pick the running back that's going to have the most rushing yards that week. Uh, I picked Will Shipley, and he got 42 yards. Not, Not really too awesome. Now, Houston picked Devin A. Kane. A. Chain. A chain, yeah, could be a cane. I don't know. <laughs> it could be nothing. He didn't from have Texas A and M. He yeah. also did nothing. Forty two yards. Now, so so Will Shipley didn't really meet my expectation. I thought he was going to be in the hundred yard range. I was looking forward to that. Now, Alan, you picked Michigan's um, Blake Corum, yep. who had seventy six yards. So you're winning right now. You're up on us. So congratulations there. But none of us really picked any of the big time workhorses. Listen to this workhorse of the week last week. If you're into fantasy football and is specifically on FanDuel with college football, Frank Gore Jr. from Southern Mississippi, 178 yards rushing. Chase Brown from Illinois, 100, almost 200 yards, 199. Man, coach, couldn't give him one more yard? Come on, coach. Tavon Thomas, by the way, Thomas, good last name. Florida Gators, 115 yards. Terrell Robinson, Army guy, 135 yards. So, again, we didn't get into the 100-yard range, but going back to um, what's one thing that Clemson can do, leading back to the running back discussion, I still want to see it. I mean, 42 yards for Will Shipley, 28 yards for Bill Maffa, and 13 yards for Kobe Pace. I want to see it. I'm missing it there. I need to see that three-headed monster. I'm talking... One of those guys got to be in the three digits. I'm looking for somebody to hit the 100-yard mark. I would love to see both of them, maybe or, you know, two or three of them, get above 60, maybe in the 80s. I know they're going to share the ball, so it's going to be difficult. But I want to see the three-headed monster be the, the na- on the national level a three-headed monster, not just inside my desire. Yeah, look, you wanted to see the running backs dominate that game. I wanted to see the wide receivers get separation, and I hate to tell you this, but Neither of us got what we wanted in that game. Uh, So the one thing I'm looking forward to in this game is for Clemson to simply impose their will. I want them to be able to do whatever the heck it is they want to do on offense. I want to see some rhythm early, and I want to see them, you know, the passing game, the running game, they should be able to do it all this weekend against Furman. I want to see it. No more excuses. Houston, is this one of those games where if you're a fan and you like to analyze things and overanalyze the thing, is this one of those games where you can't do that? Uh, I mean, I would say tamp your expectations for any time that you play an FCS or a G5 opponent, but, you know, that's not going to happen. And and that's going to bring me to what I'm looking forward to seeing is, and like it or hate it, is there going to be any more of the aforementioned quarterback drama (laughs) on Saturday? Is this going to be something where DJ comes out? He's able to find receivers that have separation. The ball's able to, they're able to run it. He's able to run it. Does he look like a guy that's added on more and to his repertoire from week one to week two, the big jump that everyone talks about? Or is it going to be something where he kind of looks the same, he looks a little better, and then once again you got the, the young gun, the maverick, the kid from Texas that comes in and starts slinging it all over the field again. Is that going to happen? It's not necessarily the 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 actual play itself. Is it is it going to be a little more dramatic between those two? I, I don't think it is. I think Clemson's going to run away with it, um, but we'll see. Here's a against the norm thought that I usually have. I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. Why do we have to say one wins over the other? Let's do this. Here's my challenge. Let's make it like a slam dunk contest in the NBA. Let's make it like an all-star game. DJ goes in, throws a bomb, touchdown. Okay, Cade, you're up. Throws a bomb, touchdown. Runs for 70 yards, touchdown. All right, DJ, you're up. Another touchdown. I want to see back and forth. I want to see defenses and opposing teams say, well, what do we do? They've got two guys 
and they swap them every single play, series, and we can't stop either one of them. I want to see Clemson have two studs. Why do we got to have one? Nobody wants just one. I don't want just one sports car. I don't just want $1 million. I want $2 million. I want three, actually. I don't want just one-headed monster. I want three-headed monster. I want more. Give me two quarterbacks that can destroy it all up and down the field and bounce off of each other, dunking on everybody. That's what I want. Is that realistic? I don't know. No. Maybe not. (laughs) But that's what I want to see. I want to see Harlem Globetrotters type stuff every single game. That's what I want to see. You don't want to see blowouts? No, I want to see blowouts. Used to, Al, I didn't want to see blowouts. That was when they were doing the blowouts. I remember this conversation very vividly. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Like, I see you shaking your head like, what's this guy saying? He, he always talks about he likes close games because he likes to be stressed out. But then now he's talking about he wants blowouts. No, I. when you have it, you don't want it. 